It would have been a pleasant surprise if Pacific Rim Uprising had used the opportunity of a sequel to scratch under the surface of the pulpy universe set up in the original. But unfortunately, it doesn't. While its fight scenes are still breathlessly fun, Uprising's script is disjointed, leaning heavily on the charming shoulders of Star Wars star John Boyega at the expense of developing the rest of a youthful, spirited new cast. Uprising picks up 10 years after the original left off, in a world only half rebuilt from the destruction. Uprising cities are stunning, part of a cohesive world that's recognizable as our own, just a little out of reach, more Tokyo than Tokyo. After a thrilling opening, it's in the ashen remains of a forgotten town that we are properly introduced to Jake Pentecost, played by John Boyega, and Amara, played by newcomer Kaylee Spaney. A pilot turned petty thief and a Jaeger building wunderkind, the pair are soon enlisted by Jake's sister Marco, played by Rinko Kikuchi, into the reformed Pan Pacific Defense Corps to aid in their defensive efforts against a potential renewed threat from Pacific Rim's hellmouth born aliens, the Kaiju. Once in the PPDC's Shadow Dome, we're introduced to pilot Scott Eastwood's Nate and Adria Arjona's mechanic Jules, characters uprising in sits are important but are really just foils for Jake. It's a shame that this pair is so relegated to the sidelines, Eastwood shows real comedic chops as the straighter-than-straight man, and Arjona's Jules is insultingly underwritten. No, this is the Boyega show, and director Stephen DeKnight seems happy to let him hungrily chew upon B-movie dialogue. With so much screen time, it's fortunate that Boyega is likeable. Even when he stretches a gag out for a little too long, he has enough lattice charm to get away with it. Spaney's Amara doesn't experience quite the same good time as her male counterpart, but she does get the more sincere and interesting storyline. Thrust into a group of Jaeger pilots in training, she must learn to drift with others in a fairly obvious metaphor, but Spaney sells Amara's struggles to connect. Considering the important role these cadets play later on in Uprising, I would have loved to have learned more about them throughout. Such half-baked characterization can be attributed to a screenplay that feels as if two drafts were inelegantly squashed together with two plot lines jockeying for position. This also means that Uprising's most interesting new ideas are left by the wayside and giant leaps of logic are made in order to propel a bursting at the seams plot forward at a breakneck pace. Some of these are forgivable. Uprising is meant to be pulpy fun after all, but others scream of deleted scenes and half-formed thoughts. Still, if all you're here for is to watch the kaiju fight the Jaegers, there's plenty to enjoy in Uprising. Fights are faster this time around, the story's justification for more nimble human-like movements is upgraded Jaeger tech, but the fluidity doesn't take away from the viscerality. It's hard not to wince in sympathy as these beautiful creations take a beating, with kaiju sending them flying through rock and ice and their expensive-looking parts breaking off in teeth-clenching chunks. It's in these battles that Uprising is at its most confident, and for many that will be enough. But beyond that, Uprising leaves a lot on the table in respects to developing this potentially interesting post-apocalyptic universe and adding more than a single note. For more on Pacific Rim Uprising, check out John Boyega playing Kiss, Mary Kill and the Uprising cast building Jaegers out of Lego.